Hey guys, I'm glad to have you guys back here at the Linux Tube. It's good to see you guys. Welcome to another video. If you guys don't mind, if you'll go ahead and comment, like, and subscribe to this video. We'll go ahead right right now. It'll make things a little bit easier. It'll make the YouTube algorithm be able to see us and then hopefully be able to spread this message to more people. And at the same time, if you'll go ahead and join the channel, if you've been watching for a while and you really like our content, it's cost less than a cup of coffee and you get 30 days of content for it. That's about seven cents a day. That's an amazing value in comparison to other platforms. So if you'll go ahead and do that for us. And then last but not least, if you'll just go ahead and just share this video with other people that you think might want to know these things, that would definitely be appreciated. And if you'll go ahead and jump into the Discord with us as well. Last but not least, let's go ahead and roll over to the intro so we can get to the video. Thanks, guys. So, to begin with, I wanted to mention today that we're actually going to be talking about something a little bit different than normal. We're going to be talking about that Arch Linux is not really the best distribution, maybe, for you. And here is why. So, whenever you're coming to Linux, you actually need to start looking more particularly in what your use case is, right? Are you somebody that needs a system that stays stable 100% of the time, it's always up and running, you can never really have downtime. Are you somebody that you can, okay, occasionally you can restart or occasionally you can have updates that interrupt your workflow? Or are you the kind to be out there all ready to go and then just being like, oh, let's be on the bleeding edge. Let's get absolutely everything in the risk zone. And let's just try everything for the fun of it. You really have to sit down and have that conversation with yourself because there are a few different types of distributions that allow you to do each of these things. So to begin with, I'm just going to start talking with the rolling release to start with. So the rolling release, or in other words, basically you're getting the newest packages on every single package with a little bit of a downside that they haven't been tested as much because of them being so new. So you may run into breakages, you may run into issues where your packages may just break magically out of the middle of nowhere and you need to know how to fix that there are great resources out there like documentation on for open there's documentation for arch there's the gen 2 wiki those kind of things whenever people classify these things they generally will look at arch linux or open tumbleweed or people call gen 2 a source-based distribution but you can break it just as easily as you can arch in some aspects so i tend to categorize that in the same area if you are going to use something like that, again, make sure you understand you know how, like how to fix those things. Because if you don't know how, you're going to be stuck in a hole and you're just going to be reinstalling over and over again. And you'll get really good at installing, I guess. But you, by having a rolling release, you are also definitely learning a lot in the process too. Because whenever something does break, you do have to go out and learn. Like I mentioned before, the Arch Wiki is a great resource. It's... There with so much information, sometimes it feels a little bit overwhelming. But that's why we have these YouTube channels like ours where we try to go out there and explain things. So if you go in and you go to the Arch Wiki, don't go looking for absolutely everything. Look for a very specific topic and go looking for that. You'll usually get your best way to find something. If you need something that you can't find there, go over to the Gen 2 Wiki. They have a great resource as well there. And they have a lot of ways for you to really understand what's going on in the Linux world in terms of technologies. If you need something even more simple to understand, you can always just use something like ChatGPT, for instance, or some other LLVM and ask it the specific question you have and it can spit it out for you. There is no way to honestly make it where you can't learn anymore with the modern technology we have. So go ahead and take advantage of that and do what you can to learn. So next we're going to move on to what I classify as something a little bit along the same lines as a rolling release, but they're slightly older packages. So we have something like Open through the Tumbleweed, right? I do classify it as a rolling release because it's new enough to be pretty much in the same category. But we're talking instead of week one packages, we're getting week two, right? They've had a week or two of testing so that you are probably not going to break, but you never know. We'll see what happens. Um, the thing with OpenSUSE, though, if you don't know, 
is it's RPM based. So it has a completely different build structure. You have to use things like RPM build to build your packages, those kind of things. And it's just completely different in terms of philosophy. So whenever you're coming to look at a distribution, you definitely need to learn and understand the structure of what you're looking at and take the time just to sit down and talk with somebody if you don't want to read something. Or just if you have the time, go to YouTube and I'm sure you'll find something. If you're not somebody who's patient, you're welcome to come over on the Discord, which I will have linked below, and join us over there and we can guide you through it. If you're looking for something a little bit more stable, but we're not talking ancient packages, you can go with something like Fedora, Ubuntu, something along those lines. Because typically those are new enough packages to where you get most of the features that you want. But they're also not bleeding edge in the sense of things are going to break all the time and they have usually been tested. So keep that in mind. At least those are with the standard versions of those distributions. If you use something like Fedora Rawhide, which that is essentially rolling release Fedora. It's this extremely beta, almost alpha class type software that they release. And if you're going to use that, then go ahead and make sure you understand absolutely everything about Fedora because you're going to run into breakages. It's just going to happen because Fedora is not actually made to be a rolling release to begin with. If you're going to do this, though, make sure you take the time to sit down and understand, learn a lot about the Anaconda installer, start to learn more about how DNF works because different package managers on different distributions do different things in different ways. So if you take the time to sit down and understand how it works, then it'll allow you to op give you more steps to optimize those things if you want to in the future. If you want to move on past that, you can go into something like Debian Linux, which that is ancient in terms of the project, which means that, right, you can go in and have really, really old packages, but at the same time, that does not necessarily a bad thing. Most of the time, Debian is used for servers or just workstations for people who know who don't need the latest and greatest. If you're going to be that type of user, Debian is great for you, right? They recently, in the last year or two, have went ahead and added non-free software to their installer, which makes it where most computers work on Debian now, which that makes it even easier option for if you're wanting to install Linux. The big thing to note whenever you're installing Linux is that Linux works on pretty much everything, right? If you want to install something on even a MacBook Pro, right, you can, but there may be some finagling or finagling, whatever term you want to use here. It's going to take some time and some adjustment. It's going to definitely take some understanding and learning to make it happen. That's with any hardware, though. So that's the big thing to understand about Linux is that you have to learn along the way, but it's not necessarily a scary thing and it makes things a lot easier whenever you do. So recently I actually had to switch to Fedora on my main machine, at least I did, because my distribution for Gen 2 was not working because of the audio interface wasn't being recognized. I couldn't get the audio to compile or anything just for some reason but I am pretty sure that's user error right and I ha I have to be willing to open be open and admit that and so would you right if you're new to something it just takes time and you have to be honest with ourselves and understand that we're gonna it's gonna take time right it's not just gonna magically work like people try to say Windows does even though that's not the case 99% of the time so if you go ahead and open up a piece of software like VirtualBox or VMware or Hyper-V even if you really want to use that. You can throw in a Ubuntu or, D or Fedora or OpenSUSE or Arch, whatever type of distributions, ISO image, and you can run it in a virtual machine. This allows you to get that experience with Linux before you actually throw it on hardware, right? Because it's a very scary plunge whenever you jump into the world of Linux if you just jump in feet first or head first or however you want to use that term because if you don't take it cautiously and slowly you're just making it harder for yourself and frankly it's probably best to just take it in one dip in your toe and then slowly walk into the water right in this situation by having it in a virtual machine it allows you to get used to that environment it allows you to get used to the differences in software and 
terms of applications that are available. It gets you different with the different type of kernel that it uses. It gets you different to the different types of workflow. If you really, really want to continue after that, that's whenever I recommend you get a thumb drive and then that thumb drive, you put it on that thumb drive and run it in a live environment. Because if you run it in a live environment, it allows you to still get that experience, but now you're on bare hardware and you know whether it's gonna work on your hardware or not 99% of the time, unless you do not have a GUI type interface for a new user that is. If you're using something like Arch, which I don't typically recommend as a first time distribution, because it is from the command line to start out with. But with that, you're actually gonna be typing in things like IWCTL if you have Wi-Fi, right? So you can connect to your Wi-Fi network, or if you already have ethernet, it'll automatically detect, but you still have to type in arch install, right? So you can have that script run because with the installer being script based, it can be very daunting and very scary for a new user, but you just have to be willing to trust the process and understand that they, they made it to make it easy, not to make it too difficult. If you are using something like Ubuntu or Fedora or OpenSUSE even, right? And they have GUI installers, which allows you just to go and hit click next or hit partitioning or whatever it may be. If you don't understand the specific concept, that's when you should stop, take a breath, you know, pull out your phone or another computer, whatever it may be, go looking up the information you don't understand because if you just jump in and you continuously just go and go and go and not understand what you're doing, you might honestly do something that may make it where you have to start all over again. And that can be frustrating and it can make the experience of switching to Linux to be so difficult. So I have to point out though, if you're going to do this, you need to make sure you're ready to be committed. Don't be that type of person just to jump in and, you know, say, oh, I'm going to have this on forever and then just go back to Windows the next day. That's not how you should be doing this process if you're going to want to switch to Linux, right? You need to co commit to this process and be willing to give it at least a month, two months under the just ready to go and giving it a try, right? Not switching. Because if you do that, it'll let you get used to the ecosystem. It'll let you get used to how Linux is different by also allowing you to learn, right? Learning is hard, and I know that. That's why it's called learning, right? That's why a lot of people have a hard time whenever switching to Linux, because they don't want to learn. If you want to learn, try Linux, right? At least that's what I always say. If you're going to jump in with a different type of distribution that's ancient like Debian, it's going to be pretty quick and plug and play and click for the most part. But if you have really, really, really new hardware, you're going to have to update your kernel to the latest version that's available and hope it works because the reality is your hardware support is done by your kernel. So your kernel is what allows for your your hardware and software to talk, right? So by doing this, it makes it where your hardware works. So if you have an older version that doesn't support modern hardware, it'll make it where they just can't talk, which means that hardware doesn't work. So keep that in mind whenever you are looking at distributions. If you have something from even the last year, year and a half, Get something with a newer kernel on it because you're going to definitely need that. If you are going to continue with this process and jumping into Linux, right, make sure you are willing to commit, like I said. But when you do it, understand the installation process may be different from distribution to distribution. Like I mentioned with Arch, the command line with Ubuntu, it's a GUI, it's open through the same thing, Fedora, same thing. But if you are unfamiliar with it, that's okay. It's different. Just give it a try, find it install, go in. And then if you notice your applications that you need aren't there, this is when we have to have the discussion about having alternatives to what you typically use. Because Linux, unfortunately, does not support things like Adobe Photoshop or Microsoft Office even officially, unless you count the web app. So, you definitely have to remember that and understand if your use case has that, Linux may not be right for you, unfortunately, unless you know how to get the workarounds, which many of us do. You can make LibreOffice be compatible with pretty much all Microsoft document formats. You can make something like GIMP or Inkscape or Krita be your alternative for your image manipulation and editing. Those are all great pieces of software. If you're wanting to video edit, we have things like Caden Live, DaVinci Resolve, those type of things that work great on Linux as well. The only downside is 
with Linux, right, you still have to pay for the licensing for different codecs. So sometimes you may have to install the codecs yourself to make them work. Just note that because somebody has to pay that bill at the end of the day. For instance, H.264 at FFmpeg for Fedora, right, is paid for by Cisco, but it's still there because it's been paid for. But at the at the end of all of this, if you're really excited about switching to Linux and you want to try it, go ahead and do it. But try to find that friend or make a friend that's willing to take you through the process and explain what's going on. Or if you don't want them to explain it, just let them be there to handhold you throughout the process because it makes it so much better. And then you get to meet more people. And the best part about Linux is honestly the community because most of the community is full of a lot of people that are have been in your spot and are willing to try to help for the most part. So if you're going to do it, give it a give it a try. And then if you need anything, go ahead and hit us down in the, the, in the comments. Uh, go ahead and reach out to us on Discord. Please hit a con like, comment, and subscribe on this video. Please go ahead and continue and join the channel if you can. It all definitely supports us. And we really, 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 really hope you can. Because we love having you guys in the community. And it allows us to continue to do this. So thank you again. And I hope to see you guys next time. Bye, guys. Thank you.